you are going to see some of the finishing touches that I have for my cabinet as well as the beginning of my platform maybe the whole thing depending on how much time I have so are you excited I'm excited this is exciting before I begin I wanted to explain the platform for my bed while the original one was great and worked well I wanted to try something new that's what I am redesigning uh, partly because of the new bed that I have as an option but also I figured I would try new things I want to try them so that you don't have to or that you can get an idea and go oh wow that is interesting I hadn't thought of that so that is why I decided that uh, even though my old platform was fine, I would try some new concepts with that and see how it works. If it doesn't, I can just do my old platform, but I wanted to see with the new cabinet and the flip flop of the sides because they are a little bit different on each side. I just wanted to see what I could do differently and maybe make it easier. That's one of the reasons I do this channel is so that you can get ideas and get the creativity started. And as an encouragement that you can do this regardless of the skill level that you have, regardless of the tools that you have. I know I'm not using the right tools half the time, but that's part of my challenge to myself and to you to say, you don't need to be a professional builder. You don't even need to have the right tools to get started, to do something and do what you can with what you have. I know that people will <laughs> have all sorts of comments about how I am doing this and that's okay. I am choosing to do it this way. Uh, yeah, I have friends who have tools. You saw my deck build with Johnny. She's got it all. I don't. And right now I'm not where Johnny is. And so I have to do wh what I can with what I have if I'm going to get this built right now. I could wait, but I want to get things started at least. So that is my intention. And it is also my intention to show you that you can do this. If you don't have the right equipment, it's okay. And you figure it out. And that is what my channel is more about, is figuring it out as you go and letting you see that it is possible. It really doesn't matter. You don't have to have the skills. You don't have to have the, the tools necessarily. A screwdriver, a saw, a drill. I do have a, a power drill. Uh, this cabinet you don't want to put together with a power drill because it can strip the screws that you've got. So you want to do it by hand. That's why they normally give you a little screwdriver thing that you use, but this one didn't. So I hope that it encourages you and inspires you to think outside of the box as well. That is where I see a lot of ingenuity in this lifestyle. It's great to see that people do what they can with what they've got. And if you've got it all, man, do it all. <laughs> but if you don't, you can still have a really beautiful semi-build and work out just fine to live in comfortably and have all the amenities that you need. So that is what I am trying to show you. This is my Home Depot haul. The beauty of Home Depots and Lowe's is that if you have the dimensions and they're, they don't need to be precise, precise, they'll cut it for you. You just go in there, know your measurements. This is three quarter inch ply. I probably could have gotten away with a half inch ply, uh, birch plywood. And then I knew what specifications that I wanted them to. I am reconfiguring my bed, the base being a little less deep and, and a little less wide so that I can do my new configuration, which I will show you as I go. And then I also had them just in case cut the other boards that are extra into dimensions that might be usable to me and they'll do it they'll do whatever if you know what your dimensions just say can you cut it to this and they will do it that is how it's done then of course i got some polyurethane to just coat this so that it will be a little bit waterproofed and i think that's 
that's it. Oh yeah, and glue, of course. I just need some more wood glue, Gorilla wood glue. So this is for my project of the new and improved or new and different bed platform. I'm going to polyurethane using a water-based polyurethane satin finish clear coat for all of these. So I'll just be doing that with a rag. Should be easy, quick job. And I always like to work with something under, even though this is just garage concrete underneath, I usually put something that will catch whatever fall off there is. For polyurethane, the best thing is either to just dip the rag or pour a little bit on it and spread it around. So that is what I am going to do. My hair is already in this. And this is just preventative so that in the future, maybe mold or water damage will just be kept in check. It doesn't need to be a full on huge coat, but it's just protection. edges, so I'll just dip it. My hair just keeps getting in there. Go away. Go away. Wait. There we go. Probably should have done the sides first, but that's the thing. Is like, it doesn't have to be cute, pretty. It just has to be done. And I will do all of them this way. And it's not even 10 o'clock yet, folks. And again, since these are gonna be under other things, they don't need to look pretty. I had painted my other platform, just it was with a paint that was mold and mildew resistant. I just thought I would do this because it's easier, it takes less time, and we'll see how it holds out. I think it'll be fine. Because I've never had any mold problems. I think it's because the mat that I use for my bed is moved so often that it really doesn't create any moisture that is kept under there for very long. It's aerated pretty much every day as I uh, bring the bed up and down. So that's something to consider. When you want a stable bed, you're gonna need to think about how to aerate the mattress underneath. A lot of people cut holes in them or uh, Chrome from Van City Van Life has this, forget what it's called, but uh, some kind of a little plastic barrier that you can put in between the plywood and your mattress that keeps airflow going. So that is one of the really good tips, I think. Uh, he has a lot of them. All right, and I'll just keep going. So even though I, I glued these in, I didn't glue it to this tabletop or this shelf. So these these shouldn't move because they're they're glued in, but to be sure, I just added a screw here. And I'll do it on the other side too. I also wanted to show here that there really was no way to do it to the back because there's a lip here. That is why I had to go ahead and do it here. Also, for the ease, I cannot, now that it's bolted down in some ways, see how much of a gap there is here? Unless I would have gotten one that went underneath like that, which I do have that one. That one is actually already on there. And then the, the, the hard part was, how do I get the drill in there to do that? So this was just easier, it'll be fine and it holds it in place really nicely. I will go ahead and do the hole over here. Here I will use a power drill because I want to make sure that it doesn't split the wood.
So there we have it, shelf secured. On my first cabinet, I learned very quickly that you don't want to have standing water at all on the, the tops of these. I think this is a little bit denser of a board, but still it may have similar issues and I want to avoid that starting off. I had these from the first time around. They're just peel and stick tiles, but they are waterproof. They're made for bathrooms and kitchens and things like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and on the bottom here, cut them to size to fit under here, and then put the, that tape around the edge here. So that if I do have any spills or water leaks from my water jugs, then I will be a little bit protected here. So that's what I'm gonna do uh, to finish this off, along with some things on top and some design elements, which I'm excited to show you. I have to watch out for where the sliding doors are, so I'm going in from that. And I'm just gonna mark here and cut a line across there. And then I'll cut one that will go in to sh that shape once I get this part done. And I'll just cut it. These are cuttable with scissors. So the, and the design on it doesn't really matter because it's going to be covered up mostly anyway. So just let me see that is a fit. All right, let's see what that does. So you can see I just kind of, I know there's tools for this, but not everybody has tools for this. So I'm doing it without tools for this to show you that you can still figure it out not uh, not as difficult sometimes as we make it. Okay, that needs, so this is the part that needs to be cut a little bit more. It doesn't need to be cut more. Right. And again, the tape is going to cover some of the, if, I, if I'm off by a little bit of a margin, it's not too bad. All right, so look at that. <laughs> Do you see it? Do you see it? It fits, it fits, it fits. All right, and now I will proceed to do these other ones back here, which are straight cuts, except till when I get to the end. So did a million little cuts to try to get that angle. I will now press and seal them. This just peels off like this. And it's sticky on that side and I will just press it as well as I can. And then again, this will be taped. And I don't wanna run into this. So I'm leaving a little gap there. Should be okay though. But this is how it goes. Just peel and stick. Um, hopefully you can see this. Just try to match it here so it looks semi-nice. And that's how it's going to look. And I'm going to wait for this little piece until I get this one in there fitted. And then this one I'll just cut to size. No one's going to see this. Very 
very easy to work with. Uh, I think I might just come back a little bit on this one. And then I'll get this piece. So this is the last piece. This won't be seen, so I'm not too worried that it's not perfect. But this will be, uh, at least it'll protect it a little bit. And then I also have the non-slip stuff, so you really don't see the design anyway. Uh, it's more for protection. All the little shavings that I had to do to get that last piece in. <laughs> little by little. So this is what the new platform looks like. This is the bottom and it is 36 by 24. And the reason I'm doing this is because I'm going to try to use a new mechanism for pulling out my bed. So I'm using the same little legs and again, the great thing about Home Depot is that you can basically bringing the measurements and as long as it doesn't need to be exact on your end, they'll do it for you. The thing that is really new is this. So this is for putting leaves on tables to make it bigger. And what I thought I would do is attach them here, right? And it extends, now I, th I thought it was 24 inches but it's 30 inches, which is actually perfect because I have another six inch piece that I'm gonna put across here to make it the full 30 uh, length of this. And then these slats just will pull out like this and it extends to, once they're bolted down, it extends to six feet. So different than putting those brackets that are undermount brackets for drawers, which I did think about. So if these are bolted down here, this extends all the way out and it's pretty strong. So I'm figuring, this is the idea anyway, who knows if it will execute well, but with these like this, so this is in theory, how, will, how this will work. Obviously it'll be turned around like that. So that we will see. So this, this flathead, there goes nothing. be holding. So we'll do the other side now. are going to be attached here and so it should essentially pull out Out on the other side, and I've 
told you before how much I love these because basically you screw them in and for me it's the right height eight inches and works really well to hold it up so I will drill those in so this is what the platform is looking like uh, I have another piece that when I pull it up it attaches to this six inch piece and it goes out to there and I put little L brackets here to stabilize it a little more but it's pretty sturdy so this is the configuration what it looks like this had to be moved in because of where the floor ends on the sliding door so I had to move it to the inside and now it should be the right configuration but this is how it looks interesting and then I have one piece of plywood that fits in between this it's another 24 by 36 that fits right on top of this one so that is the leg in question that needed to be moved. It was out here and needed to be moved in because it falls off over here. And this gap really doesn't matter because the mattress itself has a metal frame there. So really all that needs is support is these last two ends. And that is what provides the support. And then put it back together. That goes on top here. And then this slides in. So that is what it looks like when it's in bench mode. It's pretty easy to maneuver. So this is how it looks with the bed pulled out. And it's very sturdy now that I fixed the problem with that leg. So it's in enough and this is real sturdy. I'm gonna have to figure out a way that I keep this piece of wood from sliding. But basically the mattress itself has metal here and there so that's no issue and then it stretches out to i believe 76 inches when it well when it's flat so now it's about 72 inches probably which is six feet yay basically i usually use this as a headboard and this is a pillow But yeah, this is the part that doesn't have anything under it, but you really can't feel it because it has these, this metal frame underneath it. So it works, it works very well actually. So I am happy. Again, I can do this all with it closed up, but to film it, I'm just showing it like this. I usually would fold this up a little bit and lift this part like that and pull this part up and slide it and it just lifts like that and slides into place. 
with the mat on top of it. That goes here. And then this slides in. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I made my new bed platform. I do think it's very unique. I don't think I've ever seen a table extender used to make the bed. So I'm hoping that gives some people ideas. Of course, you can do it to your specifications and your desired needs and wants. And depending on your mattress, of course, what kind of support you need underneath. But for me, this works for now. Maybe I'll tweak it as I go along to make it a little bit easier to maneuver. But for now, it is working and that is all that I really care about. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.